The year is 2434 BC in Neolithic China. A man is hunched over an improvised workbench made out of a tree stump by the Yellow River. He is ignoring some other responsibilities to grind away at something with a stone. He's making some ink. Later, this type of ink would be called India ink, based on where most of the ingredients were traded from, but right now it's just called ink or something like that in Chinese, but he just wants to draw something. He has a little pointed needle that he'll use to dip in it and then drag it across the paper and make cool little designs. Later, he dies. 200 years later, nobody remembers who he is, but a few of his drawings survive in a small box. Some of them were lost in a fire earlier and some before that in a flood. Fast forward even 200 years more and all remaining physical evidence of him is gone from this earth. Once again, here we see by this river another man with a slightly nicer workbench grinding away with a slightly nicer stone making some, well, slightly nicer ink. He has only a marginally better needle to draw with some much nicer paper, but we're just not sure if his drawings will be any better. Who's to say what drawings are better than others, anyways? The point is, he enjoys it, and he even enjoys the process of making the ink itself. It's a nice reprieve from working in the rice fields all day, and his wife doesn't know he's out here by the river. She doesn't even know he draws. In fact, no one does. A thick bamboo stand has grown up around the clearing where he works, and he's happy to draw in solitude and bide his time while he develops his skills. He's not sure he's very good right now, but what he is sure of is that one day he'll be the greatest artist in all of China, maybe even the whole world. And so this lurking ambition within him kept him going, and every spare hour he had, he lurked behind the bamboo stand next to the river, and people started to wonder, and his wife was a little worried about where he was all the time, and he wouldn't tell her, and they became especially worried eventually when he didn't turn up for three days because he had slipped and fallen in the river and hit his head and died, and uh, that was just it, man. That was just it. Eventually, a search party found him floating face down in the river, and upriver a little ways they found his clearing with his workbench where he would kneel and draw, and a little waterproof box nearby covered in tar filled with ornate and carefully executed drawings. And they were all surprised and taken aback and wondered why he had kept all this from them, living in their midst this whole time but keeping such a secret. At the small funeral they had for him, they had an even smaller impromptu art gallery set up nearby, a posthumous display of the talent he didn't feel confident enough to share with them in life. And even after the funeral was over, the gallery stayed there for several years, until the town was rezoned and a huge condominium was built in its place. People stayed tucked away in their rooms high above street level and the gurgling brown yellow river far below, hunched over their desks, some of them tapping away at computers and a couple of them drawing now with the same ink invented long before with the same passion to put lines on the paper and the same brave dreams to be famous one day that kept them going and kept them putting those lines on the paper some of them found ways to draw on the computer with drawing tablets and fancy computer programs and while with this newfangled technology they could indeed accomplish incredible feats of art and illustration that, that maybe could never be possible with physical media and some things were much easier and quicker to do. Some people realized that maybe it was good to go back to the roots sometimes, to go back to those days of the bamboo stand and the yellow river gurgling by the workbench and the stump and the days of just putting the ink on the paper one line at a time. And so an artist named Jake came up with something called Inktober as a time when everyone could come together and just settle down with some ink drawings, maybe one a day or one every other day or whenever you want to do them. It doesn't matter if you're an accomplished artist or brand new or beginning or halfway through something else, just sit down for five, ten minutes a day or an hour or 
however much you want to do. There are some prompts you can follow. Just Google it or uh, whatever. It's about establishing some good habits. And the cool thing about it is there's thousands and thousands of other people doing it with you at the same time. So, you know, just get down to it. Draw a picture every day of October. Even if you're only halfway through it and you haven't started yet, it's never too late to start. Draw a picture, post it on your favorite social network, whatever it may be, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Yelp, SoundCloud, Twitter, Neopets, MySpace, Foursquare, Flickr. Just uh, hashtag it, like hashtag it Inktober. And, uh, you know, other people will be able to find you and you'll be able to find other people that are working on the same thing as you. It really just comes down to getting better at something by doing it a lot. And hopefully Inktober can be the beginning of you doing ink drawings a lot. Here, in this video, you can see the first 15 drawings I've done for Inktober. I'm doing them on little 5.5 by 5.5 inch squares. It can be nice to use smaller pieces of paper, especially for Inktober, since you want to just do one every day. That way you don't get too bogged down in one drawing. Just keep moving forward. Don't expect perfection from yourself. All right. So thanks for watching, everyone. A lot of these drawings are also for members of Peter's Doodle Club. Thank you all for your support if you're part of that. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a terrific day, a terrific October and Inktober. Just a terrific rest of the year. So uh, see you guys later. Goodbye.